Hello everyone, hopefully you are doing very, very well. Welcome back to the channel. Game week two is in the books. What a game week it was, very, very interesting. Hopefully you've had a very, very good game week two and those rankings are starting to move up in the right direction. As you can see, it was a very, very solid weekend for me here, 59 points. Game week rank of 979,000. Very, very happy with that. The one transfer we made was Marcus Rashford out for Brian and Bomo, and that absolutely rocketed me up the rankings. Very, very lucky to get him in. Very, very happy being at 718,000, but you can see there's still a bit of improvement in the team required. So Matt Turner came in and very unlucky not to get a clean sheet. With Chilwell, again, freak result there against West Ham. Mastupanen continues to prove to be... Probably one of the best premium defenders we can get at the moment, although with no clean sheets, he's looking fantastic. Gabriel, we're going to talk about him in a minute. Then Mbumo and Matoma, just absolutely legends. Captaining Salah, paid off big time this week. Saka, we can talk about him and his penalties. Bit concerned, but again, worth the hold with the fixtures they've got. And then Jackson, Harland, and Jao Pedro there up front. So a bit to go through. Jao Pedro could actually be a decent hold. There's news breaking today that Nciso has injured himself. So is there a world where Nciso is missing, which means Jao Pedro might slot back into that number 10 role behind Warbeck or Ferguson? Hopefully we'll find out. Today, what we're going to talk about is my game week three team and what I'm looking at doing long term with my watch list as well. So the main discussion points for me today is getting rid of Gabriel. And that's the, the transfer that I'm set on. So the first replacement that I'm thinking of is bringing in Josko Vardiol. Very, very strong centre back option that we've got here. You can see that so far through the Premier League, his minutes have been fantastic. He's played the 90 minutes against Newcastle and he's played 90 in the Super Cup against Sevilla. When I've, I've watched this game a lot this week and when Man City are defending, it's Diaz and Vardiol. And I think they're going to be the two at the base of the defence. You can see on his pitch map here that he's not really moving past halfway. But City's run of Sheffield United, Fulham, West Ham, Forest, Wolves, and then Arsenal is just too good to not have a piece of the defence. So Vardiol is the first option for me in at 5 million. The second option is Sven Botman. Newcastle, very strong defensively, have only conceded one goal uh, in the two games that they've played. We know Botman's minutes are absolutely locked in. So that's the big decision that I've got to make. Uh, with my team, I will reveal who I've brought in uh, for Gabriel. I've definitely got rid of Gabriel uh, this week. But Sven Botman, again, is another player with Newcastle's fixtures, though, being Liverpool, Brighton, Brentford, Sheffield, Burnley, West Ham. He rotates pretty well with Udoji, who you didn't see on that screen for me, is uh, my emergency defender. So Sven Botman, if you want a 4.5 million, I think him or Rico Henry at 4.6 are probably the two to go for. The other main players that this is more for you guys to consider, I think, in that striker spot. If you've got Jao Pedro, I'd probably hold him for now. But if you are looking at an upgrade, I think Johan Wisser is absolutely fantastic. You can see where his expected numbers are on here as well. He's already had five shots on target. Uh, sorry, uh, what's he got here? You have nine shots in the box and five of them on target. That is just absolutely beautiful numbers that you want to see from a striker. He's had two big chances. He's not passing the ball a lot, so he's not a, a creative outlet for Brentford, but he's going to be getting on the end of those Mbumo chances as well, Enrico Henry potentially. With Palace, Bournemouth, Newcastle, Everton, Forest, and Man United, I think doubling up on the Brentford attack is a very, very strong option. The only issue I've got with Johan Wisser is he's a bit of a minutes risk because he does come off typically around the 70 minute mark. So that's just something to be mindful of if you're looking at Johan Wisser. If you're looking at a midfielder, I think you look no further than Phil Foden. He has been absolutely brilliant, especially since Kevin De Bruyne has had his injury. So Phil Foden really picking up those central areas, I think is going to be where he's going to be the most dangerous. And I think if you're going to go after a Man City attacker, you've got to do it ASAP. So with Sheffield United, Fulham, West Ham, Forest, Wolves in the next five, I think Phil Foden could definitely get a lot of attacking returns, goals and assists. Could have had multiple returns against Newcastle if Erling Haaland had his shooting boots on. And I think one of those central spots is locked away for Phil Foden. So obviously you might have to pivot when you know the fixtures turn and Champions League come back because Bernardo is going to be back. 
De Bruyne won't be back anytime soon, but they've just signed Jeremy Doku as well. So it's a bit of a buy and beware with Phil Foden. His numbers, as you can see here, are fantastic. 41 final third passes already through two weeks. There's potential there for some big, big returns for Phil Foden. And Julian Alvarez. I really love the punt of Julian Alvarez. It's a very hard decision between Alvarez and Vissa. I think Alvarez is probably more minutes risk than Vissa is, but... I think with Alvarez, you could potentially get some absolutely massive returns against Sheffield United, Fulham, West Ham, Forest, and Wolves. So similar to Phil Foden, you know, there's rotation risk there, but I think this is going to be the season of Alvarez. I think it's time for him to really be that second striker behind Haaland, and I really do rate this transfer at 6.5, 6.6 million, depending on price rises. I think that is an absolute steal for Julian Alvarez. So... Here's my team going into game week three. I've got Pickford in goal once again. Everton defence. I don't know if I'm set on him, but he's going to do the job for now. Then we've got the Chelsea double up of Chilwell and Nicholas Jackson against Luton. Jackson, I'm just waiting for the day where he gets a big return because his numbers are very, very strong. I think he's had six shots. All six have been inside the box. The XG's high. All the data is showing that Nicholas Jackson will get returns. Again, we've had discussions around this with Darwin Nunes last season, but I just think there's going to be enough opportunities over the next sort of three weeks that Chelsea have that Jackson has to return. Otherwise, then I'll start looking at downgrading him to probably Julian Alvarez. In defense, I'm keeping a stupid in there against West Ham. Regardless if he keeps a clean sheet, there's big potential for attacking returns. So... Very happy to see a Stupinen in my team once again. Vardiol has come in for Gabriel. I've gone with the safer sort of player. Again, minutes risk potential, but I just think Vardiol, they've spent that much money on him. He's a very, very strong uh, centre-back. I just think there's no world where Man City don't play without him. Yudoji comes in to get his first minutes for me this season. Very impressed with what I've seen from Destiny Yudoji and a very big target for your teams if you, if you need a 4.5 defender. And Bumo... Just want to see, you know, what he can do again against Crystal Palace. A bit more of a stronger defense than what he's played the last couple games as well. But they've shown that they can concede goals. And Bumo has just been absolutely fantastic in front of goal. He's missed one big chance, but he's on the pitch. He's on penalties, just locked and loaded, ready to go. He's getting another price rise, I think, too. So he might be at 68 by the time game week three starts. Matoma, very, very happy with the return I got from Matoma. Just going to ride him, I think, you know, because he's a player that can return against anybody. Salah is going to hang around. I don't know what I'm going to do with Mo Salah. I'm 50-50 at the moment between looking to sell him in a couple game weeks or to hold him because I don't know what I'd do with those funds, but I'll probably talk to you about Mo Salah a little bit in the future. Saka just holds because it's Saka. You know, whether he actually does keep penalties or not, we don't know, but Fulham at home, very good fixture. Very, he's done, the Bakayo Saka is much better at home than he is away from home as well. So hopefully he can get some returns. And then we go Jackson Harlem. Don't need to talk too much about them up front. And Jao Pedro at this moment sits on the bench for me. Big call to put him on the bench. I like all the fixtures of my whole starting 11 at the moment. So it's hard for me to bench anybody with those fixtures. There is a world where Jao Pedro might actually come in for your doji, but... You know, it's a big risk to play Jao Pedro. I want to see within CSO out if Pedro starts, and then I'll be a bit more comfortable with Pedro starting. So hopefully you've got a little bit out of that episode, guys, as well. Hopefully you're enjoying following along with my side and how we're doing. I'm very, very excited to keep showing you guys and where we're at. Make sure you get in the comments and let me know what your transfer moves are and where your teams are sitting at the moment. Make sure you get over to the FPL show on uh, platform, different pla uh, podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, because we do have an episode live up at the moment in detail going through some of that more transfer targets, not just for the ones in my team, but I would love to hear what you guys have been doing so far with your teams as well. So all my social links are in the description as well. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week for another review and preview of FPL Game Week 4.